for lesson five of our equations unit, we'll be talking about how to solve word problems involving multiplication and division. But to solve them, we're going to write equations first. Equations can be used to find missing information and to solve problems. So in this case, we may be able to see the answer or see the solution step, but what we want to do is also represent it with an equation. Number one, the cell phone bill recorded that Jeremiah sent 532 text messages last week. On average, how many text messages did he send each day? So right away, I saw the total that he sent, and this was in a week. And then I saw that at the end, they asked for each day. So somehow we have to change the weekly amount to a daily amount. And then the question is asking how many texts each day. I saw one other keyword, and it's the word average. Average is usually telling us that we're dealing with multiplication or division. Okay, so total was 532 texts in one week. What we want to know is texts each day. So I think we should use our variable to represent the thing that we want to know, the texts each day. I'm going to use D just because I want that idea of each day to be in my mind. Okay, so one other piece of information is super important here. We see that we have week and then it turned into day. To get from weeks to days, we need that number seven. So one week equals seven days. Okay, so start with your variable. This is the text he sends in a day, one single day. And if we were to multiply it by seven, now it's the text that he sends in seven days, right? This is one day, multiply it by seven, you get the text for seven days. Well, we already know that his text over those seven days, that one week, was 532. So seven times texts in one day equals the total number of texts, 532. We're gonna go ahead and solve this. Divide by seven on both sides. Seven divided by seven makes a one. One times D is just D. D equals, and then we need 532 divided by seven. That's going to be 76. So our final answer here is 76 texts per day. And we averaged that out. So it's not for sure that he did 76 each day, but on average, meaning if we split it up evenly over the days, it's 76 texts. For number two, on Friday afternoon, Maggie and her two friends washed their neighbor's cars in order to make some money. They split the payment equally and each walked away with $3.50. How much did the neighbor pay them for washing the cars? So right away I saw Maggie and her two friends, which means we have three people. They split the payment equally. That right there is keywords for dividing, split equally. And each, that's another one that tells you divide, each walked away with 350. So 350 each. How much did the neighbor pay them for washing the cars? So we're looking for like the total that the neighbor paid them. So we know three people. We know $3.50 each. But what we don't know is how much they were paid in all, in total. So we can pick any letter we want. You could say mm, N for neighbor. It really doesn't matter. M for money if you want. Okay, so start with your variable, the total money that they got paid, the total money the neighbor gave them. Now, they were handed that money, and then they split it up, meaning divide. So I'm going to show that money being divided by how many people? Well, it was three of them. 
And when you take all that money and you divide it by the three people, you get $3.50, the amount that each person got. Now we can solve this. On the bottom, we see a three. That's division by three. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three. When we do that, three over three makes a one. So this is just one times n or n. On the other side, we need 350 times 3. That's going to be 1050. So they were paid 1050 overall, and then they split it up between themselves. We'll look at some examples together, and then the remaining examples I will just show the work for at the end of the video. So number four, each week you spend $18 on school lunches. At the end of a 36-week school year, how much money have you spent on school lunches? First thing I see, $18 is each week, and it's going to happen for 36 weeks. The question is asking, how much money have you spent on lunches? So our variable is going to be that question. So total spent on lunches, and we're going to call it T. T equals. So start with your variable. If you know the total and you know how much each week, each tells us to divide. So the total divided by $18 is going to give you the number of weeks that you bought lunches. The total money you spent divided by the amount of money you spent each week is equal to the number of weeks that you spent money on lunch. To solve this, it would be the same step as what you probably were already thinking, which is to do 36 times 18. So multiply by 18 and by 18 on both sides. These 18s cross out because it's 18 divided by 18, which is one. So we just get T equals $648 total. All right, number five. The perimeter of a square measures 26 centimeters. What is the length of the side of the square? So remember that a square has sides that are the same. All the sides are the same. Perimeter of a square is 26 centimeters, meaning add all the sides and you'll get 26. They want to know what is the length of the side of the square. Well, when I labeled it, I actually already labeled it as S. So let's use S as the side length. And again, a square has all four sides the same. So all the sides are called S. Each side is called S. So the total for the perimeter would be 4 times S because if you do S plus S plus S plus S, that's just 4S, equals the perimeter 26. I'm going to erase this part here. Now, on both sides, divide by 4, divide by 4. We're going to get a 1 here, just S. And then we need to do 26 divided by 4. That's going to come out as... 6.5, so 6.5 centimeters. Number six, a Netflix subscription is on sale for $41.94 for six months. What is the cost per month? So we have the total cost, and that cost is happening over six months. We want to know what is the cost per month, meaning the cost for just one month. So I'm going to say C equals cost per month, okay? Now, your first thought here might be, you know the total, you know the months, let's divide. Well, when we write the equation, it's going to be backwards of that, the reverse of that. So start with your C. Here's the cost per month. How many months are we paying for? We're paying for six months. So six months times the cost for one month 
would equal the total we paid for all six months. If we solve this, it looks like division by six, division by six, because that's the inverse. And we end up getting the same step that we were expecting, 4194 divided by six. So C is 699, $6.99. That's actually very cheap for Netflix. Okay, number eight, Molly and her four friends are attending the opening of a movie. They purchase tickets, popcorn, drinks, and candy for a grand total of $56. They decide it is easiest to split it evenly. How much does each person owe? So Molly and her four friends, so that's going to be five people. And then they have a total of $56. And they're going to split it up. So if we were just reading this, splitting it up tells us we're using division. So your solve step would be to divide. That means when we write our equation, we're going to see the inverse of division we're going to see multiplication. For our variable, how much does each person owe? And we could say M equals money owed by each person. Okay, now start with your variable. There's five friends all together and we know the total that they paid. So if you think about the money that each person paid and that there's five people, if you want the total, you have to add up the money that each person paid. But since they all paid the same thing, we can use multiplication. So five times M, five times the money that each person owes equals $56. I'm not gonna put the decimal point in the zeros because we don't need them, all right? And just like we said, the solution is to divide exactly like you were thinking when you read the problem. These make a one. So we just have M equals, if you do out this division, you get 11.2. I'm going to add a zero since this is money. So $11.20. Each person pays that. Multiply it by five and it becomes the total that they owe $56. Let's go back to number seven. Sally's Bake Shop sells a box of brownies. Jonah divides the brownies among five friends. If each friend receives three brownies, then how many brownies are in the box? So let's see. Five friends. Each friend gets three brownies. It doesn't say that Jonah's getting any. It seems like Jonah is giving away the brownies. Then we want to find how many are in the box to begin with. We're looking for the total. So I'm going to say B equals total brownies in box. Before we keep going, there are really two types of multiplication and division word problems. There are problems where our equation is looking for a total like this one. And then there are problems where our equation is looking for what each person or each thing or per month, per day, looking for just one of something. So for example, in six and in eight, we're looking for just one month, just one person. Then if we go back to number four, that one was looking for a total again. We had the two pieces and we needed to turn them into a total. So notice in six and eight, our equation had multiplication and we used division to solve it. But in number four, we had division in our equation and then used multiplication to solve it. So in number seven, because we're looking for a total, we're going to have a division equation that we solve by multiplying. So we have five friends and each friend receives three brownies. We have our total, which is B the total number of brownies in the box. What we're going to do is take those brownies and split them up among five people. So B divided by five. And when you divide the brownies across five people, you get three brownies each. So we end up with a division equation. To solve it, do the inverse. Let's multiply. Times five times five. 
On this side, we just make a 1. So we just have b, 1b. And then over here, 3 times 5 is 15. So there must have been 15 brownies in the box. And here are the remaining examples. I'm not going to talk through them. You can just pause to copy them down. Looking for a total in number 3. And then 9 and 10 